In this video, we're going to show you how to test a canister style ignition coil and all you need is a multimeter with a resistance setting. Let's get to it. A bad coil can cause lots of different issues like difficulty starting, misfires, a rough idle, loss of power and a bad fuel economy, just to name the most common ones. When testing a coil, you can only conclude with certainty that it's bad when it fails a test, but if it passes a test, you can never be sure it's always going to function correctly when hot or powered because a heat-degraded coil can cause intermittent failures. That being said, let's get to it. To test the ignition coil, you'll need a multimeter with a resistance setting, which is indicated by a horseshoe symbol like this one over here. If you have an automatic multimeter like we do, it'll only have one resistance setting because the multimeter will detect the range needed for whatever it is you're measuring. But if yours has multiple resistance settings, you'll need to select the 200 ohms one to measure the primary winding and the 20 kilo ohms one for the secondary winding. So keep that in mind. Initially, your multimeter might display a one or OL like in our case, which stands for open loop because the probes aren't touching anything. If it still displays OL or a 1 while measuring, the resistance is too high to measure in the selected setting and you should use a higher setting. Then first look at the resistance of your test cables. This should be almost none. And whatever value you measure on your test leads, you'll need to subtract from the measurement of the primary winding to get the correct result. To test the coil, you need to test the primary and the secondary winding inside the coil. The primary winding is between the positive and negative terminal, which are these two on the side here. The secondary winding is between either the positive or negative terminal and the high voltage output in the center, and both measurements should be the same. Let's start with the primary winding. Grab your test leads and connect them to the primary winding. It doesn't matter which way you connect them, the result will be the same, but make sure your multimeter is set to 200 ohms if you don't have an automatic one. Make sure the test leads make good contact and read the result. If your test leads had a bit of resistance on them, subtract it from this reading. In general, the resistance should be between 0.2 to 3 ohms of resistance, but it's best to look up the exact values for your specific ignition coil. To measure the secondary winding, first select the 20 kilo ohm setting on your multimeter if you don't have an automatic one, so 20k ohms. Once again, make sure you have a good connection. In general, canister-style ignition coils should have between 5 and 15k ohms of resistance, but once again, make sure to check what the value should be for the one you have and the resistance should be the same for both sides. Now the last test is something you can do in both the resistance setting or in the continuity setting, which is indicated by this arrow symbol and usually gives an audible indication as well. What you then want to measure is whether there is an internal short between either one of the three terminals and the case. First, you need to make sure you have a bare metal spot on the coil. Often these are coated and you can't test for resistance or continuity through a layer of coating. Then hold one test lead against the bare metal spot on the case and the other on the terminals on top. They should all indicate an open loop or a one. You can perform the same test by putting the multimeter in the continuity setting. If there is a short between the case and terminals, you'll hear it with an audible beep. That's all there is to it. Now you know how to test a canister style ignition coil with a multimeter. However, these tests don't rule out if the coil malfunctions when it's hot or powered. So if there's any doubt, you might still want to replace the coil. Thanks for watching. More videos are on the way, so be sure to like, comment, and share this video. It really helps us out a lot. Our content wouldn't be possible without the amazing support of our patrons and YouTube channel members whose crew you can join via the links in the description to see our schedule, vote on future videos, get behind the scenes sneak peeks, and much more. This is Classic Car Maintenance, and we'll see you on the next one.